Tonight, Guatemala's presidential election descending into deeper turmoil. Demonstrators rushing to the streets overnight, protesting the bombshell announcement that one of the nation's leading political parties, headed by moderate reformist and anti-corruption candidate Bernardo Arevalo, would be suspended ahead of next month's runoff election. This is a full-fledged attack, assault on Guatemalan democracy. Now they're doing everything they can to attack the will of the people. Arevalo, who finished a surprising second in a contentious battle with the front runner and former first lady, Sandra Torres, saying he will not comply. El Ministerio Público ni el juzgado tienen la capacidad para suspender la personalidad jurídica de ningún partido. But the nation's attorney general's office says Arevalo's seed movement party was suspended for allegedly violating the law while gathering signatures it needed to establish the party. Some residents aren't buying the story. The suspension came down on the same day Guatemala's top electoral body certified the first round of votes after weeks of waiting. On Thursday, just hours after that certification, the attorney general's office raided the headquarters of the election authority in what they say was to search and seize evidence from voter rolls. This is going to test the Guatemalan democracy and the belief in democracy in Guatemala. And I think tensions will continue to increase. Democracy in Guatemala reaching a critical point. Sandra Torres and her allies repeatedly questioned the election results despite international and domestic election observers saying there was no fraud. In this case, a page that was taken out of the U.S. playbook and we saw it played in Brazil and now we're seeing it being played in Guatemala. And right now, just 17 percent of Guatemalans say they trust the electoral system and only half of eligible young people are registered to vote. A nation now bracing themselves for a turbulent political landscape as their election hangs in limbo. And Allison joins us now here at the desk. So, Allison, obviously we've seen the, the distrust in government, as you talked about there, but this is a people that are really frustrated with the way their government is working. Yeah, and election watchers outside organizations monitoring human rights, things like that, say they have very good reason to feel that way in this process. But one of the really big telling signs was if you look back at the initial election results from mid-June, mm -hmm. there was about a fourth of voters who went to vote but then did a protest vote. They either voted no or they said no vote because they are so frustrated in the system and they don't trust what is happening. And so how is the U.S. government responding to what's been happening there in Guatemala? So the U.S. State Department issued a fairly lengthy statement about this, saying that they are deeply concerned by what is happening there. They went on to say, in part, quote, these actions put at risk the legitimacy of the electoral process at the core of Guatemala's democracy. The U.S. then saying the June 25th election results that were certified and the Guatemalan Supreme Electoral Tribunal upheld both the credibility and integrity of that, that those uh, in what was, as they described, the most observed electoral process in Guatemala's history. They said that those results, the runoff between Torres and Arevalo, those should set the stage for a free and fair election on August 20th. But right now, we really don't know what is going to happen. It's sort of this weird limbo freeze of they're saying this party is ineligible. That candidate, Arevalo, is saying I doesn't matter, but we don't really know what's going to happen come August. Aaron? All right, Alison Barber, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.